Westminster's Cathedral is in the uh, in the historic quarter of the city, and uh, I'm on the other side of the road from St Nicholas's Square. You can see the site cabins and all our hoarding with our messages to the public on the outside of the building. Uh, and I'm afraid it blocks off a lot of the north facade, but you can get a sense of where we're positioned with Cathedral House on the left-hand side and the monument to Queen Victoria in the middle of St Nicholas's Square. I'm standing in the choir in the heart of the cathedral. The choir with its cathedral and wonderful alabaster screen was uh, positioned here ready for the cathedral's inaugur inauguration in 1882. Uh, it's a wonderful carving of stonework but also the woodwork which is carved by Ralph Headley, uh, a prominent regional artist in Victorian times. Um, you can see the arcading of both the 14th century fabric of the building and the fretwork of the woodwork as I pan round. Um, and as I come towards the other end, the western end of the choir, we have a small pipe organ here. The other organ is at the moment currently boxed in at the west end of the cathedral during the capital works. And as, as I pan round, you'll see there's a plastic screen which is dividing the east end and the choir from the capital works. So all that is hoarded off um, as we undertake the capital works. The misericords and choir pews are where the, uh, the choir sing. Lovely checker floor. And to slowly pan round and walk outside of the choir, down into the side aisles, um, so you can get a sense of the east chapels, which had been open to the cathedral until March, when we had to go into lockdown. Here's the vestry door. It's a very visual, rich cathedral, full of wall monuments, memorials, and also floor monuments as well, to the great and the good that were buried here, including some illustrious figures such as Collingwood, who was Nelson's right-hand man at the Battle of Trafalgar, and also Collingwood Bruce, who was the founder of Roman archaeology on Hadrian's Wall. As I walk round to the East Chapels, you'll get a glimpse of the East Window, and originally there was a long, long view from the West End right down to the East End, but when St Nicholas Church became a cathedral in 1882, the uh, choir blocked off the view to this East Window. This was donated, originally the original window was donated by Roger Thornton, who was um, rather a Dick Whittington figure of Newcastle. He became mayor three times, grew from rags to riches, and he donated the east window. But this one is a later replacement. Here we've got Roger Thornton himself uh, on a Flemish brass, the most largest Flemish brass in the country from the 15th century, uh, and it was he who dedicated the window behind me. And then above, we have a significant sculpture by Stephen Cox, which is the Eucharist. I'll just give you a, a glimpse of the other stained glass windows, one by Caroline Townshend, who was a, a prominent female stained glass artist and also suffragette. So I'm going to go out of here and then take you round to the West End, to the Capitol Works. Inside the cathedral, I'm looking down the north aisle and this is where the ledger stones have been positioned in less vulnerable positions. They've been moved away from areas of high traffic in terms of people walking down the nave and, and damaging them. You can see how thick and heavy they are. We have a really significant collection of about 130 ledger stones which are being placed in the south and the north aisle and along the crossing. And this will be the basis of our interpretation. We'll be telling the people's lives, the, the stories of those people buried in the cathedral. Uh, the great and the good, but also some anecdotes about the people that helped to make these ledger stones as well. And here you can see some of the incredible heraldry and what a terrific record these ledger stones provide of the people relating to the burial book that the cathedral has, uh, which, which plots all these ledger stones. And the idea is that we're putting them into position. Uh, they've already been moved once actually in the previous remodelling of the cathedral and now we're moving them back to where some of them anyway, to where they were originally positioned uh, when they first came into the cathedral. I'm standing in the heart of the nave now. You can see all the brasses and wall monuments are protected, but the ledger stones have been lifted, and there at the end is the west window with the font canopy over the font, which is boxed in at the moment. And as I pan around, there's the A-frame for lifting all the ledger stones which are being replaced. There's St Margaret's Chapel in the far centre, where we aim to place the knight, which, and the knight is currently in a stone arch very similar to one of these, but in the south transept. 
but he was never in an arch originally, so we're planning on putting him in St Margaret's Chapel. And there is the south transept, and at the very far end under that window is the night boxed in also. Uh, now we're coming up towards the, the east end. Uh, the workmen are laying the central heating and the concrete screed over the floor. Uh, this is the huge screen, like a sailcloth, that we had to put in to close off the west end. You can see the height of the ceiling and the boss's wooden ceiling in the centre of the nave. And then panning round again uh, to see the arcades of the 14th, 15th century construction. And the organ is behind that piece of polythene over there. Uh, again, splendid stained glass all the way round. Uh, but I'm afraid you cannot see the cathedral in its glory. You'll have to come back when we've finished our capital works. And finally, I'm standing now in St Margaret's Chapel and we're looking at the only piece of medieval glass, a beautiful roundel of the Virgin and Child. And this is where we would like to bring the medieval knight and other fragments of medieval stonework into the chapel, which will always be a neutral prayer space, but also a place where visitors can enjoy our interpretation and appreciate the medieval art.